cacao is a medicinal plant, if, if it's intended for healing, you can't have slave labor growing it. Like your body's, your body can tell. Your body can tell if there's ecological or human disruption happening before this thing gets to you because we're energetically sensitive beings. Um, and ultimately, you know, it's like what you put in your body is who you are. This, and yeah. And, and so I just I'm, want to interject for those that are listening and never thought about these things. You can look stuff up online. There's uh, people that have taken water and then said good things to that water and then said bad things to that water or been neutral and then freeze it. You can actually see the jagged edges of the water on the ones that wasn't, in, uh, that weren't treated well. Uh, it was a Japanese man, I forget his name that did, he played classical music to some water and then like death metal to another and the ice formed like more jagged on the death metal and it was all smooth for the classical side. And then also plants the same way, you know, like, you know, uh, my great grandfather, they always said he had a, a green thumb, but then, you know, as you talk to everyone more, they say, he said he would talk to the plants all the time. And, um, and, you know, like, so he like loved his plants and, you know, the more that I, you know, that we notice these things, that they are living. And this gets into like a spiritual sense or woo woo, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, if, if you, you could talk bad about it or say, this is crazy, but if you try it, notice uh, what happens in, in your life. And it, that's why gratitude is such a big word, like to, to me, and it's an easy one for people to start with, like, just be grateful for your yard or where you are. Like if you live in a building and you don't have a yard, like just going outside and being grateful for the tree that's right there. Um, what, whatever it is that can like have birds sit in it and that, and the sound of those birds and just noticing that, that gratitude. And I think this comes back to like that, that saying of grandma's cooking, like I can have grandma's recipe and I can make it and it never tastes like hers. And it's the same ingredients. And that comes back to the love that you're, you're talking about. And it, because, you know, grandma put her love in feeding the family and you could taste it in the food. And it wasn't about the ingredient. It, well, that was an ingredient that's added, added in. And one more story to add, when I was in Peru, you know, we look at tobacco, tobacco for the indigenous people is, is a very sacred plant all through North America and South America. And, um, and I guess worldwide at some point, but I really think about it in these areas, just because that's where I visited the most to talk about this. But the, the word mapacho, you probably already know about this, right? It is, they, they bless it as the tobacco is drawing. So that intention um, is put into that plant, you know, and then you look how that's been removed and they'll tell you in broken English, you know, white men took the, um, the energy away, right. You know, like by yeah. adding all these chemicals and taking away the spirit of, I mean, even alcohol or fermented beverages is called spirits, you know, and it's just been now taken away and commercialized and all that energy. And th these are my beliefs, obviously I'm saying, but I just wanted to add to what Jonas is saying here, because some of you might be hearing some of these things for the first time. You're like, what are you talking about? The plant has, I mean, plant is life. So to say that it doesn't have life or that we're not including that in this, or that it can't feel that it's been abused or that abused people have been providing that for you and that energy doesn't get included um that it would be yeah. crazy to to say that and one last thing for just generality that you can bring to yourself is have you ever walked in a room and then noticed that the energy felt off and you might even felt uncomfortable and you might even left there sooner or you walk in a room and the energy is so amazing and you don't want to leave that's from the energy of the people that are there and if that's true then how can it not be true everything else that Jonas is saying right now right yeah. And, you know, I, all of my cacao sourcing, people constantly ask me, how do you choose? You know, all these cacao producers send me samples all the time. Like as chocolate makers, I just get cacao beans sent to myself. And the way I choose is the energy that I feel like I can't describe it, but like literally the cacao tells me, like, I feel it. I'm like, Oh my goodness, there's something special about it. I mean, how else did, you know, at the time this Belizean cacao that I chose to pursue pioneered this new purchasing model for cacao farmers that basically purchases wet cacao from farmers, takes the process of fermentation off their hands, which is kind of the post-harvest work that they have to do. Yeah. It gives them more time to spend on their organic cacao farms, tending to their farms, and also more time with their families by paying them a better price than they used to have to 
that than they used to receive for taking the fermented product to market. They pioneered this model. It's now being replicated all over the world. Um, and you know, how, how did I tune into that? I mean, I mean that that that's where it's the energy can transmit through physical objects really clearly. And every single cacao that I've been drawn to since then has used the same model, um, where the farmer livelihood and ecological restoration are are kind of an essential part of it afterwards. Like you can feel it. And I, on the contrary, I've received cacao that's been really poorly sourced, and it's been it's made me want to quit chocolate making when I like did a batch for somebody who wanted to use this cacao, you know, I was like, man, this is dead. Like, I just, I don't feel great about this at all. Um, and so it's made it really clear that this is a medicinal plant that's, you know, a, a very good carrier of energy. Um, and that I'm, I'm so glad you brought in gratitude because so say you're interested in cacao say you're interested in the health benefits like the re the way to really activate it is with gratitude it's not just a passive experience like that's not a relationship and that's that's kind of a key to what we're talking about is kind of shifting from having a passive relationship with candy where you just consume it and it's done you know the experience happens to you you don't do anything else besides putting it in your mouth versus actually working with it being like okay there is there is more than just physical form to this drink and you speak to it you speak to it like you speak to a person you know you 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 share gratitude i have a list of things that i'm grateful for to help me remind me of things i'm grateful for when i'm not feeling grateful because it's not something our culture is used to there's actually many indigenous cultures that gratitude is said to feed life I attended this outdoor nature awareness school and this elder came and he was going to give us this talk. And first he spent like an hour talking about all these things he was grateful for. And at the time in my life, I mean, I was like, I don't have time for this. Once you finally get to get on with it. <laughs> but to him, this was the most important thing we could be doing. Like the words of gratitude are the words that come before all else. They feed life. They bring us into this harmonious frequency that everything we do afterwards is more productive and more connected. Like we're really getting to the core of the matter because our hearts are activated. And so that's, that's exactly how to work with cacao. And that, that's where I've really just found astounding benefits, astounding breakthroughs is by, by treating this plant with respect, by, by like inviting that bitterness, help, letting that remind me to pause and then remember what my gratitudes are and starting from that place. And then from that place, you know, that that's, that's where then I can ask for help with things. You know, it's every entrepreneur needs help with a gazillion things. I, everybody in their personal life needs help with a gazillion things. I've had to really humble myself over the years and get good at asking for help. And I found just this extraordinarily fast cycle of resolution to all these things where I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work, but I need help with that. And I do that as I'm drinking my cup of cacao. And sometimes the same day, sometimes it takes a month or two, but I find just way faster problem resolution um, when I, when I really humble myself and come to cacao with gratitude and then, and then, you know, ask, ask for help. And so that, that to me, that that's relationship, you know, that's like working with the plant. And that's, that's why people consider this plant sacred. It's, it's really some sort of medium. Um, you know, that's, that's what people say about medicinal plants is they, 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 they basically can help us communicate with all the other life on the planet. And if you think about it, uh, cacao is a rainforest tree. Um, the rainforests are some of the most biodiverse places on our planet. Rainforests are all about more life. Hey there, I want to give you something really big. It's called Clear Path to Customers. It's the way that we get the right language to get the right client. I like to call them your wow clients so that you can have more results, more revenue, more raving fans, and more referrals. And I want to give this to you absolutely free. And all you have to do is go to stevenoplaton.com to check it out. Or you can look at the description here. We'll put the details there. As always, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.